Greetings, my fellow beings. My name is Amanda and you are watching Amanda's Musings. So I was going to record a different video this week, but something happened over the weekend that caused me to want to record something else. So over the weekend, I ended up going to the ER and it ended up being an experience that was really awful. And I'm still coming down from the anger that I have been feeling um, all week. And I really am not happy at all. And I did a lot of research on this, but it was so depressing that I ended up not writing a script. So this is unscripted and me just talking. But I am going to put all of the research that I found in the description box below. So make sure that you check those out because what I'm gonna be talking about today is not uncommon, but everyone thinks it is. So I was sitting on my chair and I was battling a four day migraine. So I had taken a migraine pill earlier in the day. And then quite a few hours later, I took another migraine pill, a different brand, but I was super nauseous. So I ended up taking a anti-puking pill as well so that I didn't hurl everywhere. Well, the thing is, is that I felt when that pill kicked in. My heart felt like it skipped a beat and I ended up gasping for air. My cat was laying on me. I was petting him, just watching TV when that happened. It wasn't very long. I can't say that it's unusual because I have had my heart skip a few times, quite a few times. So it wasn't that unusual. So I went back to just petting my cat and watching TV, waiting for my migraine pill to kick in. And then my muscles started twitching. Now I have muscle twitches, but this was like all of them. Like everything was twitching all over my body. And I was like, what, what is going on? And then it started to be hard to breathe. And I started gasping for air. And I texted my husband who was downstairs and I said, I can't breathe and my muscles are twitching and I am ringing in my ears and I need you to come upstairs. So he came upstairs and I was just gasping for air. And so he got my oxygen tank. And so I started breathing oxygen, but it wasn't helping. And then a thought occurred to me, I have never taken this particular migraine pill with an anti-puke pill before at the same time because it was new so I never had taken it so I have an app that tells me what drugs interact with each other and I put it in and it just came up with red flashings like do not take these pills together and I was reading the symptoms of taking those pills together and all of my symptoms were down on that list. And I was like, oh crap. And at the bottom it says, if you have any of these symptoms, go to the hospital immediately. I avoid the ER like the plague. I have yet to have a good experience while at the ER. Um, because I have so many different illnesses that they just get frustrated with me. But my husband insisted that we needed to go to the ER and I agreed with him. So very carefully, we went down the stairs, me gasping for breath, and we went into the car and he drove as fast as he could down to the ER. This was in the middle of the night, so there was no one on the roads. And we get in and I was the only person there. So they take me into a room immediately, which was nice. I didn't have to wait. And the nurse is taking like all the information. My husband's helping out because I can't really talk because I'm gasping for breath. And I open up my medical ID on my cell phone. So it originally started on iPhones where if you went to the emergency page on your home screen or your closed screen, um, you can put a medical ID there 
And so I had that and now I think Android has it as well. So I opened up my medical ID and I just handed it to her and I, because I couldn't really tell her all of my conditions and all of the medications I was on, it, it wasn't gonna happen. So I handed that to her and she's typing on the computer and do 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 do. And then they end up putting an IV in my arm um, to get me some fluids. And then they told my husband that he couldn't stay because of COVID-19. Now, I don't, I don't talk about it a lot, but one of my biggest fears is that I am going to get COVID-19 and I'm going to have a bad reaction to it end up in the hospital, they're going to take me away, I will never see my husband again, and I will die alone. That is my biggest fear. So when they said that he couldn't be there, I started to cry. And my husband knows about my one of my biggest fears, so he was telling me everything's going to be okay, he's I'm not going to leave you. We're, it's going to be okay. I'll just be right outside, okay? It's going to be fine. So he leaves and the doctor comes in and I am still crying because I am terrified of dying alone. And the nurse hands over my medical ID to the doctor and she is looking over it. And then she looks at me and she says, oh, do you have anxiety? And I said, yes. And then, and then it dawned on me, please no, please don't do this to me. This is not, this is not what you're thinking it is because this is pretty much what doctors think all the time. And I am not treated correctly at ERs because of this. And then she looked at me and said, have you ever had a panic attack before? And I was horrified. I was absolutely horrified. And I nodded my head and she was like, well, I think that's what this is. So we're gonna get you an anti-anxiety medication. I have had panic attacks, multiple panic attacks. I know what a panic attack feels like. This was not a panic attack. And I don't just go to ERs for panic attacks. No, because I know what it is. And my husband helps me out when I'm going through a panic attack. This was different. This was scary. And I knew that it was a drug interaction that had gone very wrong. And I told her, I said, I, I think it's because I took these two pills together and she's just very condescendingly went, uh-huh, and then she left. And then the nurse asked me if I wanted the lights off because I still was in the middle of a migraine. And I said yes. So I was left alone in a dark room for quite a while, considering that I was the only patient in the ER at that time. And then another nurse comes in and he gave me my medication in my fluids that they were giving me. And he said, you're gonna feel a lot better once this kicks in. And I was like, "I'm no, I'm not, but okay. <laughs> so he leaves and then they bring in um, a portable x-ray machine, which I'm like, okay, um, I guess if there's something wrong with my lungs, or my heart, maybe they'll see it. Um, so they took that, the, the x-ray, and then he left. Um, and hospitals are freezing cold. They, they are always very cold. And they didn't give me a blanket. They didn't even offer it to me. And I was shaking. I was so cold. And then they brought in an EKG and they hooked me up to it. And she literally had it record three seconds. It was, I counted it. And then she ripped the paper off and unhooked everything and left. And I was like, three seconds isn't gonna tell you anything. My heart was every 20 beats kind of skipping. 
And of course, while the EKG is going, my heart is behaving itself. So, you know, that seems to always happen to me. So then I'm left alone again in there and they're like, well, we'll just wait for the medicine to kick in. Now the medication they gave me, I had been on for a really long time and then it stopped working. So I knew darn well it wasn't gonna do anything. And I kept saying, you're gonna feel so much better. You know, it's been a stressful time. Like I was watching TV petting my cat. I had no reason to panic. There was nothing to panic about. I didn't start panicking until they told me my husband couldn't stay in the hospital room with me which he ended up getting kicked out of the hospital altogether, so he had to stay in the car. <sighs> Calm myself down a little bit here. It, it happened quite a few days ago and I'm still really angry. And then the nurse came in and they said, oh, your vitals look really good. And I looked up at the, the monitor that had all my vitals and I was horrified absolutely horrified what was on that screen. So I take my vitals every single day because I have to report to my doctors about my health and any trends that are happening. So I know my vitals very well. And I looked up at the machine and yes, for a healthy person, it looked fine. But I have a naturally very low blood pressure so for me, my blood pressure was through the roof, but it looked like a healthy person's. And I was trying to tell the nurse this. I'm like, no, this is not normal. That's not my normal uh, vital signs. And my heart was at like 101 and I had been laying there for like three hours. I'm like, that's normal? Really? That's, that's healthy? Okay, yeah, sure. Mm. Okay, but no one would listen to me. And I kept telling them, I was like, I know my body. This isn't what you think it is. I, I really do not think this is a panic attack. I think this is a drug interaction. Is there something you can give me to reduce the effects of a drug interaction? And no one would listen to me. And I was getting really frustrated and just angrier by the minute, but I still just felt like crap. Like I was not feeling good. So I'm still trying to breathe. It had gotten better, um, but not completely better. So then the doctor comes in and they turn the lights on and they're like, we're gonna discharge you, call your husband to come get you. Um, and then she handed me paperwork on panic attacks and anxiety and how to deal with them. And I looked down at this piece of paper and I was absolutely livid. Livid is the best word. And I kept saying, it's not that. And she was like, well, it is all of the symptoms of a panic attack. So I really think it's a panic attack and you're able to talk a little bit better after the medication. I didn't feel the medication at all. They said I would be super relaxed and whatnot. No, because the pill didn't work anymore. So my husband comes in and he gets me and I slowly walk out of the hospital. And when we get in the car, the car door shuts. I just break down. I'm sobbing in the car. And I told my husband, I said, I told you no one ever takes me seriously in hospitals. And it was interesting because the day before we had gone up to my parents' house for a socially distanced birthday party for my sister. So chairs wide apart and whatnot. And um, we had gotten on the subject of not being taken seriously in hospitals. And my mom, my sister, and I were all describing absolutely horrible experiences in hospitals where they always think that it's anxiety. They always think it's a panic attack and they give you antidepressants. And so I avoid ERs because of this. 
because they always think it is a panic attack. Now, if my dad, who goes to the ER a lot because he has a lot of complications with his health, because he is a wounded vet and has a lot of complications with his health. So he ends up in the ER a lot. If my dad presented the same symptoms that I did, he would have been wheeled in. Everybody would have come in with all kinds of machines to check on him. They would have given him pain medication because my chest hurt so bad from my heart beating so hard and I could feel it in my neck. So my neck hurt. And if my dad said anything like that, they would have taken care of it and it would have been fine. Like he would have been okay. But if a woman goes into a hospital, there is still the theory that women are more emotional, so they are sick less often. And so if they come in, it's because of hysteria. Now this goes back all the way to ancient Greece where hysteria was the word for womb. So over the years, they believed that all issues were because the womb was moving. So if you had a certain illness, it was because your womb had gone into this part of your body, or if you had another illness, it's because your womb had gone. It was called the wandering womb. And um, then good old Freud was the reason why women are given antidepressants way more than men when going to the ER because he started the theory that it's all in women's heads that when they feel pain when they feel anxiety if they feel depressed if they feel like their leg is broken I don't know then it's all in their head because women are naturally hysterical So obviously Freud, no one actually follows what he says anymore because all of his theories were debunked. So that was pretty recently when most of his theories were debunked and it still has carried over to today. So I had been doing a lot of research on this and I wanted to give examples of women who had absolutely horrendous experiences in hospitals and it ended up just making me so sad that I had to stop. It was having an effect on my mood and my husband was like, you need to stop. You need to stop researching this. So one thing that I do want to bring up is that women are more likely to die from a heart attack than men because when women come into the hospital, their symptoms are treated like an anxiety or panic attack. And they are given anxiety medications and then they die. Men who come in with those symptoms are treated seriously and their heart attack is stopped to the best of their ability. So the problem is we are in the modern age. We are in 2020 which has been a year it has been a year i don't get surprised from things anymore because zombies are next just so everybody knows and women are still treated this way now not all women i'm not saying that this is an experience that every woman has experienced because there are really good doctors out there and there are doctors that really care like my specialist he is fantastic my um gp oh my gosh i love her like she is wonderful i have a neurologist that bent over backwards desperately trying to figure out what was wrong with me and my therapist i can't even explain how wonderful she is so there are really good doctors out there so i'm not saying that this is across the board everybody's gonna have this horrible experience but it is more common than not. And so we have to ask ourselves, why is this still a thing? 
in the year 2020. One big thing is that in medical textbooks, when they're talking about panic attacks, they always use the feminine form. So the textbooks will say things like, she will present in this way, she will have these symptoms, she will, so it's just, they never use the masculine form in any of the textbooks that are on panic attacks or anxiety. And yet when it comes to pain management, they always use the male form for that. So he will have, you know, excruciating pain. He will experience this and be in horrible pain. And the problem is, is that the theory has always been that women are more emotional. They're allowed to express their emotions more, which is true. And men are more stoic. And so if they're hurting or sick, it is definitely real. But if a woman is hurting or sick, she has anxiety. So there's, there's that. So the question is, what can we do today to avoid this kind of stereotype of women? Because women know their bodies. They know when they're in pain. And I knew I was not having a panic attack and I still had every symptom I had leaving as I did going in. And it lasted for quite a few days. So the question is, what can we do? First of all, you need to be an advocate for yourself. And sometimes you have to be very pushy in order to get that done. Also, if you are a man, be an advocate for the person that is in the hospital. My husband is fantastic because he is always standing up for me and he is always telling them, no, this isn't the way it is. No, I've been seeing it. I know that she's sick. No, this isn't normal which was the other reason why I was getting so scared when he had to leave. I knew that my advocate had just left and I knew no one would listen to me. So if you are a man and you have a wife or a girlfriend or a friend and you go to the hospital with them, be an advocate. Hunt people down if you have to just be there and explain to the doctors that no, this isn't normal, you need to fix it. I can't tell you how many times I would go in to the ER and I would explain what was going on and the doctors would just go, mm-hmm, okay. And then my husband would chime up and he would say, no, this isn't normal, I know my wife, this is not how she acts, this is not normal for her. And then they would listen. And then they would give me the proper medications or do the proper procedure. I have so many really bad ER stories, but this one is sticking out the most because it happened the most recently. I'm gonna leave all of the research that I did down in the description box below so that you can check out wonderful stories from women that have had really bad experiences. And also there have been a few research studies about this phenomena and so i'm going to leave that in the description box as well um, it's not researched a lot but it is beginning to be researched which is a good thing this wasn't supposed to be a bummer video this week but it ended up being that way because of this experience so hopefully i didn't bum you out too much and remember, this isn't the experience of every woman, so don't think that every single woman is going to experience it. But like I said, it happens more often than not. So please stand up for yourself and stand up for your friends, your wives, your girlfriends. Be there for them and be their advocate. So I'm going to end it there because I'm still getting really riled up. So I'm going to just end it there, go sit on my chair and... Uh, Drink my salt water. It does have sweet flavorings in it, but I have to drink salt water because of my low blood pressure. If you wanna to subscribe to a channel, 
that is about chronic illness, learning about different illnesses out there, or you just want to watch a crazy lady, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit the notification bell because that's the only way that YouTube will let you know that I had posted a new video. I post every Monday, which gives me a little time to actually make these videos. And please do give me a thumbs up so that YouTube can see that as well. Remember to be kind. Kindness is free, so give it out to everyone. And I'll see you next time. Bye. I take my vitals every single day because Winston, get down. Yeah, don't eat the plant. Gee, you want to cat? The theory has always been <laughs> um.